the next lesson we are going to study under surface tension is capillary rise so that's going to be our next topic and um, so what let's see what capillary rise means so from the word uh, capillary from the adjective capillary you should be able to understand this has something to do with capillary tubes if not uh, very narrow tubes with a very small internal area or very small internal diameter okay uh, now capillary rise means in small tubes the liquids rising now the, uh, due to capillary rise uh, the, you see this capillary rise in uh, in nature around us in real life in plants the water is absorbed through roots uh, through stems uh, <clears throat> due to capillary rise okay so let's see how that happens imagine there is this uh, liquid surface and we have uh, dipped a capillary tube inside that liquid so i will use this color for the liquid surface right this is the liquid surface and then we have a tube which is uh, which is narrow and it has a very small internal diameter so i will draw it like this indicating its uh, small internal diameter okay right this is how it is so when you dip a uh, tube like this now let's say it extends more but i have drawn only the uh, required parts so if you take this the liquid right the liquid is here fine and uh, now this liquid will be inside this part no problem until here but automatically the liquid will rise like this and at the top you'll have a meniscus depending on the liquid okay right so this height we can say it's the capillary rise. This is we are going to talk about this height, and we are going to derive equations and all for this height. Now, we, this doesn't happen in the la, in the wider tubes. The problem is it will happen, but it will be very very small. So we won't be able to notice it much. Maybe in very few small millimeters, one maybe less than one millimeter, one or two millimeters. So it won't be very much noticeable. But if the the tube is very narrow, then this will be noticeable. The reason for capillary rise is again surface tension. Uh, the, there's a we have learned that there's a uh, adhesive force between glass and water due to that adhesive force uh, the the liquid particles which are in contact with the glass will try to interact more with the glass so they will go uh, they will tend to rise up and the other particles which are in the middle due to surface tension due to the uh, cohesive forces they will also move up i'll repeat first of all the liquid particles which are in contact with the uh, which are in contact with the glass surface. If you take glass surface, will uh, will want to interact more with the glass surface, so they will rise. So the liquid particles in the middle, they will they have cohesive force, right? They have cohesive force because of surface tension. Then they will also rise with the particles in the corner, with the particles which are in contact with glass. So you will have this water column or liquid column created inside a capillary tube, and you will not be able to notice this in wider tubes because the diameter is large so the rises will be very small to notice and you will get a better understanding while we uh, derive an equation for simple h all right good right so this is another phenomenon uh, due to capillary rise now let's try to find out an equation sorry this is another phenomenon due to surface tension now let's quickly try to find out an equation for this now if i draw it a little magnified i'll draw this part a little magnified uh, let's see fine okay right now if you take that part little magnified you will have a menis meniscus like this okay there's a meniscus like this and uh, when you have a meniscus like this we all know that there will be a contact angle it's very important that we mark the contact uh, contact angle so i'll take a random contact angle so that we can compare for all the cases in the previous tutorials we learned that contact angle can be zero it can be acute it can be 90 it can be obtuse it can even be 180 so this is the contact angle and uh, on top it's this diagram is actually 3d we have just drawn the side wave cross section so the uh, if you take the 3d uh, the 3d part on top there will be a meniscus like this right yeah so what you see actually is a hemisphere not a hemisphere to be precise it's a part of a sphere on top you see on top right so this is the liquid this is the top part of it and then you have this meniscus all right so this is how it actually looks like i'll use the same color so that it will give us more clarity good fine now uh if you consider this i have drawn it a bit short it's okay if you consider this people now the problem is there is a liquid uh, column which has risen like this but the liquid column will always want to go down 
what's the reason its weight okay because of the weight the liquid column will always want to go down and there is this height h and when you talk about uh, weight and all we will need to know the radius of the capillary tube too so i'll take the radius of the capillary tube as simple r all right fine the liquid wants to go down because of its weight but it doesn't go down that means there is an upward force which is stopping this liquid from going down and that is the force created due to surface tension right so that force will be acting like this i will use uh yeah the red color okay so that will be acting like this in this direction like this and see if you can understand in this direction here like this and on the other side also it will be acting like this okay so when you have uh, the surface like this when you have the surface like this it will be acting out of the surface like this but depending on the contact angle if the contact angle is zero it will be acting exactly i mean uh, precisely upwards vertical okay but the, here we have taken a, a random contact angle so the force will be acting like this this total force we take it as f okay f the problem here is f is not vertical it's, it is it is at an angle so if this angle is theta this angle also is theta agreed vertically opposite angle hence uh, okay we consider quickly for equilibrium when you consider for equilibrium equilibrium upward force must be equal to downward force the upward force is actually f cos theta all right f cos theta all the forces in this direction you have to take the component and when you take the horizontal components all the horizontal components will cancel out each other this 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 everything will cancel out each other so only vertical forces will be there the f cos theta is equal to the weight uh, i'll take instead of weight uh, let's put mg okay fine so um, simple r is available h is available the density of the liquid is available the surface tension of the liquid is available and the contact angle is available so we have to substitute these values now when it comes to f f is the force created due to surface tension and uh, we have learned that uh, f is equal to surface tension multiplied by length so equal to surface tension into the length is this length the length of um, the liquid surface interacting with the solid surface that is this circle so when you take uh, the length means i'll just mark here length is going to be the circumference of the circle which is 2 pi r so you can just substitute uh, t into 2 pi r and i am not multiplying this by 2 okay I'll, let's multiply it by 1 why do we multiply by 1 because there is only one free surface liquid meniscus is air liquid just one free surface so we multiply by 1 done and um, that is 1 and how about mg then mg we know it is the weight so instead of weight we can say volume into density then i will substitute this value it is a uh, t into 2 pi r into 1 equal to instead of weight i can say volume into density into g okay right so the liquid has uh, density rho and surface tension capital t and i will continue it here fine so on the left hand side i have 2 pi r capital t on the right hand side if you take the volume this is actually a cylindrical part which has gone up do you agree with me cylindrical part and there will be a small uh, part which is not flat but we don't consider that we ignore that uh, 2 pi r t because compared to the height that will be very small and instead of volume we can put what is the volume of a uh, cylinder pi r squared h volume and don't forget the other two rho g we are almost there and i forgot another one yes that is the cos theta part ah for, it is f cos theta so it should be into cos theta here also into cos theta fine okay so then uh, pi will get cancelled off one of the r's will get cancelled off our uh, target is finding simple h and when you rearrange this equation you will end up in h equals on this side 2 pi t and cos theta are going to be no sorry 2 t and cos theta are going to be remaining because pi and pi will get cancelled off r will get cancelled off with one of these r's so i will have 2 t cos theta divided by on the right hand side it is r rho g this is the equation for capillary rise so capillary rise depends on few things you can see the surface tension of the liquid the contact angle the radius of the capillary tube and the density of the liquid as well these are the factors which is going to affect capillary rise okay now i am going to derive this equation in another method also now sometimes the, you might have to derive this equation uh, in your you know essay questions or something like that uh, this is the easiest method to be honest this is the easiest method don't forget uh, the contact angle consider it as contact angle if they say 
contact angle is 0, then you know cos 0 is 1, then you will get h equal to t over r rho g. But remember this equation, so you are always on the safe side, right? Any, any angle you can use this equation, right? Fine. Then uh, I said that we can uh, derive this in another way and that is how the way we are going to derive it is using the formula for pressure difference across spherical liquid meniscus. Uh, that was the lesson we learnt in the previous tutorial, okay. So let us say how we are going to use that concept. Let me analyze the meniscus first, right. So the meniscus of this uh, will look like this. The meniscus will look like this, All right. It will not be a hemisphere. If you consider theta, your angle of contact to be an acute angle. I wanted to take it as an acute angle so that uh, I can generalize that later, fine. Uh, I will quickly mark the acute angle again as we considered earlier. Uh, so, this is the ac acute angle I am talking about, yeah, theta, see, good. Now, let me quickly mark certain very important distances we will need here, um, right. Now, this is a uh, this is a curved surface and the radius will be larger than the radius of the liquid. So, this uh, if you take this as a center, then um, this will be the radius of the meniscus, capital R is the radius of the meniscus, simple R is the radius of the uh, capillary tube. So, if this is a, this is a perpendicular, guys if this is theta, if this angle is theta, this angle is also going to be theta, this angle is going to be theta. See if you can understand, how is that? Uh, if this is theta, this is this should actually be 90, this angle should be 90 because this is the tangent, this is the radius, the angle between the radius and the tangent is 90, then this small angle has to be 90 minus theta. If this small angle is 90 minus theta, this is 90, so this has to be theta. So, a little bit of geometry, it is not a very complex geometry, you can figure it out, alright. Uh, if you want, I can explain it again here quickly, my diagram is not very accurate. Uh, now, this is the tangent, this is the radius, so this angle has to be 90, okay. If this angle is 90, this is theta, 90, so this angle should be 90 minus theta, this angle, okay. Now, if that angle is 90 minus theta, we are talking about this angle, correct, right, that is going to be theta. So, what is the relationship between capital R and simple R? We have an equation for simple R, that is the radius of the tube. But we needed, but here we can't use simple R because for this equation we have to use the uh, radius of the meniscus. So, here the relationship is going to be um, cos theta equals cos theta is equal to adjacent side over hypotenuse side, that is simple R over capital R. So, capital R is equal to simple R divided by cos theta. This is where we are going to, so I, we will be using this later. Right. Now, let us move on to the, uh, let us draw this again a bit, bit larger, not very large, a little bit larger, okay. Fine. Now, imagine a situation like this and we have the liquid. Our purpose is finding a equation for H, that is our purpose. And we will have the meniscus here and this is the height we are talking about. So, here we are going to unveil certain things, uh, we do certain things different here, I will take four points, I am going to take four points for me to compare, this point I will take it as capital A, this point I will take it as capital B and this point I will take it as capital C and this point I will take it as capital D, okay. I am going to use these four points to derive this equation again but in a different method, okay. I hope you are clear with this part, uh, yes. So, first of all what I have done is I have found the relationship between the radius of the capillary tube and the radius of the meniscus, liquid meniscus, uh, simple R and capital R, done. And then here if you consider, we start quickly, uh, the pressure at A is going to be pi, atmospheric pressure, why? Because it is exposed to air. Similarly, pressure at D is also going to be pi, why? Because D is exposed to air, right. Those two are done. And then when you compare a, point A and point B, th those two points are on either side of a liquid meniscus. If not, it is uh, those two points are on either side of a spherical uh, liquid uh, surface or meniscus, all right. For this, we can apply the uh, pressure difference equation. What is the pressure, dif pressure difference equation we learned earlier? Change in pressure is equal to 
2t over simple r. Why 2TO simple r? Only one free surface, so it's 2TO simple r. For soap bubble, 4TO simple r. Fine. And what is the pressure difference? We know that uh, A is inside the curve, so pressure at A will be larger minus pressure at B equals 2T over R. All right? Fine. Uh, instead of PA, we can substitute pi. So I say pi minus PB is equal to 2T over R. Let's save it as first equation. Okay? Fine. And then point C pressure at C. Now, when you say pressure, uh, when you consider point C and point D, they both will have the same pressure. What is the reason? Because uh, point C and point D are at the same horizontal level or in the same liquid which is at rest. Uh, in mechanics, you have learnt if there are two points in the same horizontal level in a liquid which is at rest, the pressure will be equal. That is what I have written here. And in the meantime, point C is inside the liquid column. So, we can write the pressure of point C. Normally, in mechanics, what we did was pressure at C is equal to pi plus h rho g. That is how we wrote right? pi plus h rho g. But in surface tension, you cannot do that. The pressure at C is going to be actually Pb plus h rho g. What is Pb? The pressure just inside the meniscus plus the pressure due to liquid height. This not Pa plus h rho g. Careful. Huh? P, it should be Pb plus h rho g. Fine. And uh, yes. Now, I said PC is equal to PD. So, instead of PC, I can substitute PD, right? From these two equations, we can, uh, yeah, I'll say 2 and I'll say 3. From 2 and 3, we can conclude that PD is equal to PB plus H rho G. But what is PD? PD is pi because uh, D is exposed to air. Then if you substitute that again, pi equals PB plus H rho G and pi minus PB is equal to h rho g. We saw something similar that is this because uh, here pi minus pb, here also pi minus pb, second equation. Uh, as you can see, first and second are same. So, you can say first and second are same. When you combine those two, you will be in, you will end up in h rho g equals uh, h rho g. Okay, I made a small mistake here. Uh, for, for the radius, I should have actually substituted capital R because capital R is the radius of the meniscus. Simple R is the radius of the uh, capillary tube. Na? But I have substituted the radius of the meniscus, so it should be capital R. Right. Extremely sorry about that. Then if you sub equate that, it is going to be 2T over capital R. And finally, I will end up in an equation simple H equal to 2T divided by capital R rho G. This and this are not the same. Why? Again, I have used the radius of meniscus. Here I have used the radius of the capillary tube. But we know capital R is equal to simple R divided by cos theta. And if you substitute that value here, H equals um, 2t over simple r divided by cos theta rho g and if you take the cos theta value up again you will end up in h equals 2t cos theta divided by r rho g. Okay. In MCQs when you get a question about capillary rise you can directly uh, use the equation which I have highlighted. It is the same thing. Uh, the method of deriv uh, deriving it is different. All right. Uh, but sometimes in uh, essay questions, there is a possibility that they might ask you to derive uh, this equation. If they have not specified a method, maybe it is better if you can go with this. I do not know. It is up to you. You can choose the method. Here, I feel like uh, we are doing a little bit extra work because this we had to figure out this and steps are a little bit longer, but interesting. Uh, if they have specifically told to consider the method, uh, consider to equate the forces and get the answer, then this is the method. And if you have, if they have specifically mentioned that you have to get the obtain the equation using pressure difference method, then this has to be your go-to method. All right. So this this is the equation for capillary rise, and the good news with this, the theory theory part of surface tension is over, but uh, we have to apply these things for most situations, and uh, we have to analyze few cases. But uh, if you ask me if there are any more equations we have to learn new, no. This is it. So, with this, the basic theory of surface tension is over. In the upcoming tutorials, let us try some questions and let us analyze some other cases.